from Soldier Field in Chicago. It's week 14 of the NFL on EA Sports. Chicago Bears taking on Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to one of our favorite spots, Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. This was the scene a moment ago as the Bears emerged from their tunnel. Ready for football are they and ready for football are we as the Bears get set to match up with the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, you look at this Bears team entering play. They come in on a pretty good roll here. Winners of three straight. And the offense, my goodness, over 50 points in the win last weekend. When you do that, you're not going to lose very many games. Maybe not any games. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Eagles, they come in off the extended break from the bye. I think it was much needed as well. You play two, two and a half months, you're ready for some time off to get set for the home stretch. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. Not sure what you thought, but I thought it was appropriate when he walked into our meeting with his arm totally encased in ice because he threw five touchdown passes last week and won the NFC Offensive Player of the Week award. Yeah, but reading the paper this morning, and he said, gosh, I actually thought I should have got six or seven. But still, it was an amazing performance a week ago. Boy, I'll tell you what, if he thought he should have had six or seven, that's a guy who's an absolute perfectionist, not just greedy. And he powers his way up past the 30. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. throw out wide to Mooney. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. Well, they brought the pressure and that made man coverage behind him so he's still able to complete the pass. Even as he took the hit. And that's what you have to do because I was just talking with a coach the other day. He said, look, it's not always going to be pretty back there. You're going to have to give me completions. Even when you're taking some hits, sometimes you have to be your own blitz control, for lack of a better term. Got to make completions step up and make those throws, and he did that. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 42. Now a handoff here to his running back. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Touchdown! That's caught. Jarnell Mooney with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Bears take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Looking sharp on that first drive. These guys, of course, coming off back-to-back -back victories. And you see that kind of advancing into this game, don't you? You certainly do. And when you have a team that doesn't get too full of itself, even though they've won two games in a row, you get the end result that we saw there, that nice opening drive, because they're sharp, they're focused, and they're locked into everything that they're doing. The extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7-0 game. 
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Phillies offense getting ready, and Jalen Hurts ready to lead them. The second-round pick who started his career at Alabama then finished with an electric senior season at Oklahoma. You talk about the pause that refreshes. I think it's come at a perfect time of the year for them, hasn't it? You know, they, it's the season is starting to wind down, got a little bit of a break. But how about the guy calling the signals? He's got to be excited about that because now he didn't just get a game plan for one week. He was able to work on it for two weeks. I can't wait to see if they have anything special in, in store for him today. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. But first down, Hurts. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. They'll wind up losing three there on the sack. Good pressure, and it's second down. Out of the gun, here's a give to Mack. It's a seven-yard pickup. They'll be looking now to third and six. This defense for the Bears, they were fantastic a week ago in that win over Houston. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. Well, again, man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage not zone and there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion and how about this a fake and he's brought down can't do anything with a football it's a sack and a turnover on downs so they went with a trickery there on the fake punt hoping to catch that return team flat-footed but it did not work out and you were talking about trying to catch them flat-footed. That's what they were hoping for, trying to catch them off guard. That's a well-coached team on the other side. They were more than prepared, and they were able to stop it. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third down, Fields steps away to his left. Now a loose football, the ball comes out, and the Eagles have recovered. I know that taking care of the football is something that's drummed into every guy who plays this position, no matter what, whether he's running it, in the pocket, out of the pocket. But it's almost surprising to me that there aren't more fumbles by that position because of the way that they get attacked on each and every play. Yeah, well, he had the fumble last week. Now, here's two weeks in a row with a fumble loss. Concentration has got to be there, and he's got to understand how much time he has to take care of a play. And maybe his clock is off just a little bit. Here's Mack to get it again on second down. And once again, he's going to be stopped up behind the line. Second straight play. Shades of the 85 Bear defense a little bit. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Got a man, it's Brown. Just a five yard pickup and it leads to fourth down. 
That reception, his 600th NFL catch. Congratulations, quite the accomplishment. And on is the punter Charlton now as he's able to get this one away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. To throw on second and ten. Fields completes a Mooney on the slant. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Heavy set out there on third and one. To throw his fields. There's Moody with another catch. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. So from the 36 now, first and 10. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. A big play that time through the air. 33 yards. When they've needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Here's second and ten. Fields throwing again. Flushed out right. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Now we're going to get a stoppage. It appears to be an injured bear on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. Fields to throw on third and one. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. And he's top five in the league in terms of receiving yardage because of plays like that. What have you seen from him on film that you like so much? Well, I'll strip away everything else and get to what we call the moment of truth when the ball's arriving and there's a... And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. A great effort there. Hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Bears will add on to their lead. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now 14 to nothing. So that drive in total eight plays. And the camper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. This taken in at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. And they, of course, coming into this one in the midst of a tough losing streak. They did get helped out by the open week last week. And in talking with him, all indications were, Charles, that that was a very helpful break. Yeah, I know a lot of teams, coaches, they hate taking time off in the midst of a losing streak because they think they have to stay on their toes and punch their way out of it. But occasionally, you get that open week, you step back, evaluate what's been going wrong, see what you can put in that can move you forward, and maybe you get a chance to breathe a little bit and kind of start over. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built, get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Here's Hurts to throw. Quick slant to Brown. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. 
And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Buying time to his left. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Hurts. They'll run the screen with Mack. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. And Charles, you, you look at this defense. They were a very loose group coming into the week, knowing they kind of had the upper hand going into this one, taking on a team that hasn't won in a month and a half. And that works well for you if you establish your dominance early in the game against a team that's struggling. But if somehow they fashion some plays together early, knock them back on their heels, that looseness can be used against them. Then they're trying to scramble to make sure they get their game right. Into the hands of his running back, Marlon Mack. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Throwing again on second down. Hurts looking for Bateman. He's got him complete. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Throwing his Hurts. Now he's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. Marlon Mack, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Eagles get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Extra point right down the middle. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Well, the Bears going to take over now late in this first half. And with a seven-point lead, they'll likely look to take this to the locker room and not really press the issue. On first down, it's Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Now a first down throw, Fields. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. No gain on the play. And it'll be second and 10. So we come upon halftime here at Soldier Field with the Bears out in front as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get to some of these scores around the NFL here in a busy week 14. We'll get things started up at Ford Field in Detroit. And it's the Lions who hold on to the lead in that one. The Lions trying to hold on and claim victory. We'll stay in the NFC North as we head over to Minneapolis to check on the Vikings at home in U.S. Bank Stadium. And they were winners in their ball game over the visiting Dallas Cowboys. The Vikings are hoping now to just avoid double-digit losses on the year. And they avoid that fate at least for one week with their fourth victory. Finally, let's get up to the place they call Title Town. Green Bay, Wisconsin, to see what's happening with the Packers. And that game, level, as they take on the visiting Indianapolis Colts. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. It's the Eagles ready to see the football first, and they trail here as we resume action in this third quarter. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. The Eagles ready to go on offense to begin this third quarter. 
They do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And this is going to be an Eagles first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Hurt sets up to throw it. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Now a throw here to his running back. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Here's second and a yard. On the give, this is Mack. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Now back to throw. This to the outside for Mack. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. Just a gain of a couple there. And that's going to make it fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? They're going on fourth down with Hurts. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 30. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. The first half did not go their way, and that's not going to help matters at all. An interception here on the opening drive of the third quarter. Obviously not what they were striving to accomplish, but you know who's really upset on their team? The defense. Already trailing. They're going to be counted on to try and hold that score at least where it is. A lot of effort there for just a three-yard gain, and now second down. Fields, flush to his right. Finding some room at midfield. And brought down across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Fields on first down, eluding the pressure right. That's caught by Jackson. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Again, Fields. That's complete right side to commit. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. The quick slant caught. Touchdown, Bears! Jarnell Mooney with his 13th touchdown of the year and second of the game. And the Bears are about to make it four straight as they add to this fourth quarter advantage. The extra point splits the uprights, and it's now 21-7. A good drive that 
the time as they go nine plays in all. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taking it about the one. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's for Bateman, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 35. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, at this point on the clock, had to throw it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. On first and 10, here's Fields. The man is connect the tight end. And a good game here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Second and goal from inside the five. And to give this time to the tailback. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears extend this fourth quarter lead, and they are getting closer and closer to win number 11. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taking it about the one. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Eagles offense making their way back out as we take a look at the playoff picture in the NFC. And I tell you, four weeks still to go, and everything is wide open, and it's fun. And I know we always talk about, what well, the playoffs were to begin today, and then we kind of go, okay, but they're not. Let's see how it plays out. Wouldn't it be fun to play with this playoff lineup right now? Because to me, just about anyone can win this whole thing out of this grouping we currently have. And by the time we get there, it may look entirely different. Throwing again on second and 10. Hurts. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Look to throw here. Throw right side here, taken in by Bateman. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Throwing the out route and complete. It's Smith. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, it's Hurts. Quick slam here to Smith. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. They'll look to throw again. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. 
They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. On first and 10, it's Hurts. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Hurts throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Trying to get away, but could not. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bears will get the football back. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. The last run got six, now second and four. Field's going to get that out wide to Mooney. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. That one looks like he'll throw here. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, throwing back across his body. Picked off right around the 43. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Eagles' defense gets a pick six TD. This game's still fairly well in hand, but I think now you, you go conservative, don't you? Go into your shell and just run the football? I think you have to, but you also have to tell your backs, make sure you're really protecting the football because you're going to run into a stacked defensive front, which is why they were throwing the football before, trying to make sure they just get their backs, you know, really beat up in that situation. Now, good luck to them. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Throwing after the interception. Fields escaping the pressure right. That's complete to Mooney. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Flushed out right. It's caught by Jackson. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Fields forced out to his left. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And the connection not there. Incomplete. Just 14 seconds down to the final couple of plays here. He's going to try and go deep again. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Now Fields, he's going to take another shot here. And oh, it'll be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the Eagles are right back in this football game. And now with that interception, you feel like we've got a ball game again. Remember, two-score contest and still time left here in the fourth. And in the old days, not too long gone either. Throwing the ball here would have been an absolute no-no. But the way the game's played now, throw it, it makes sense. You just have to be careful when you put it in the air. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. 
And he will finally be taken down, but not before he reaches the 38. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And they were really helped by their defense, forcing three turnovers. I think what we saw in this one, today's defense. And what I mean by that is in the old days, Pitching shutouts was big time. That was paramount. But the big thing was holding people down, holding down their yardage, right? Don't let them throw the ball through the air and gain a lot of... But now, it's about taking the ball away. Taking away possessions, getting the ball back for their offense. They had three takeaways in this one, and it led them to victory. So for Chicago, the win pushes their record now to 11-2 on the year. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Dallas Cowboys. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, it's unfortunately more of the same as they'll fall to 3-10.